Well, hello and welcome to Lesson 21-1 Practice, focusing on the 45-45-90 triangle, the right isosceles triangle, another name for it. So let's take a look. Number 10, for each 45-45-90 triangle, find A and B. Recall the, the ratio that we learned is that, or the special relationship we learned, because that's really what a ratio is, it is, it's a relationship between two numbers, is that the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the length of the leg times the square root of two. So if we know the hypotenuse, we can find the leg, and if we know a leg, we can find the hypotenuse. So on item 10, the question is, do we know the length of a leg or do we know the length of a hypotenuse? Well, B, this side here, is the hypotenuse because it's always opposite of the right angle. So we don't know our hypotenuse. We are given a leg, and in an isosceles right triangle, the two legs are actually the same length. So without doing any math at all, just knowing the properties of a right isosceles triangle, A has to be 3. So in fact, if you do forget the Pythagorean, or excuse me, if you do forget the special relationship between the hypotenuse and leg, you can still use Pythagorean theorem from lesson 20-1 to find B because we actually have two sides of a right triangle. I find it a little bit more interesting though that we can rely on this relationship to find our hypotenuse a lot quicker. So with that in mind, we have the length of our leg. So on A, if H really does, or the hypotenuse does in fact equal the leg times the square root of two, and we know the length of our leg is three, then the hypotenuse is simply three times the square root of two. In other words, B is three times the square root of two. Now, test yourself. Feel free to do the Pythagorean theorem here just to make sure that that is actually the correct relationship, but that should be good. Now let's look at item B and see what we're given. So item B, we are now tasked to find the two legs of the right triangle, and we're actually given the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So if the hypotenuse is equal to the leg times the square root of two, and they tell us that the hypotenuse is eight times the square root of two. Just some simple math here. You might actually, before you do any math at all, you might see the relationship between eight times the square root of two and L times the square root of two to figure out that in effect, L is eight. But let me show you the math that's actually happening here. If we divide both sides, because we're trying to solve for L, or in this case, A and B, we're trying to find the length of our legs. If we divide both sides by the square root of two, the math behind it is, the square root of two divided by itself becomes one. And just like it cancels, although I hate that word, square root of two divided by square root of two is one, and so it'd be one L. Well, what happens over here is the same over here. So square root of two dividing by itself becomes one. Therefore, eight is the length of our leg. So A is eight and B is eight. And that's one of the great things about understanding this relationship and how really it makes the math a lot easier for us. Let's look at item C. Let's figure out first, are we given the length of a leg or the hypotenuse? Well, right off the bat, we see that this side here is opposite of the 90 degree angle. So we are missing the hypotenuse and we're given the length of one of our legs. So again, the hypotenuse is equal to the leg times the square root of two. So let's replace L with one of the measurements of our legs. Oh, before we even do that, we can go and say that A is the same as our other leg, nine times the square root of 15, because again, in a right isosceles triangle, the two legs are congruent. So now let's replace um, the length of our leg, L, with nine times the square root of 15. So H is equal to nine times the square root of 15 times the square root of two. And you can put this in parentheses if you prefer or put a dot there, but definitely show that we're actually multiplying these two. Now we actually showed this math, um, the mathematic principles at work here on the previous page, page 293. Um, and so just to reiterate, especially in the practice, when we multiply 3x times x, just basic algebra, 
Um, the three is actually multiplying by an understood one in front of the X. So it would be three times one, which is three. And the X, these two X's are actually going to multiply and multiply to give us X squared. So we actually are multiplying like terms within the term itself. Same thing here with, with our square roots. Nine is actually going to multiply by the understood one in front of the square root of two and give us nine. And then 15, being the square root of 15, is going to multiply by the square root of 2 and give us the square root of 30. So the length of our hypotenuse, which is B in this problem, is 9 times the square root of 30. Which, just look at the relationship. 9 times the square root of 30 is 9 times the square root of 15 times the square root of 2. Now, number 11 puts kind of removes the diagram from the equation, but we can most assuredly draw one. 11 says the length of each leg of an isosceles right triangle is 5. So just a quick sketch here. We have an isosceles right triangle. These two legs have to be the same length, so 5 and 5, and they want us to find the perimeter of the triangle. Well, again, the relationship here is that the hypotenuse is the length of the leg times the square root of 2. So if we know the length of the leg is 5, plug in 5 for L, we now know the length of the hypotenuse is 5 times the square root of 2. So now we have all three sides of a right triangle after they just gave us one measurement. So the first thing we're told to do is find the perimeter of the triangle, which is the total distance around the triangle. So let's talk about how that math works here. So we talked about the mul multiplication with variables. Now let's talk about the addition with variables. So 3x times x is 3x squared, 3x plus x. Well, when actually adding these two, the only reason we actually can add them is because this term contains an x, and this term contains the exact same variable raised to the same power. So 3x plus x is actually 4x. And so you might be wondering, where did the 4 come from? Well, there's an understood 1 in front of this x, so we add the 3 plus 1, and we don't alter the x. And notice how that's different than multiplication here. So on item 11a, when we were tasked to find the perimeter, in other words, totaling the distance around our triangle, we are tasked to add 5 plus 5 plus 5 times the square root of 2. Well, the only reason we get away with this math up here is because these are considered like terms. We can actually combine 3x and x because they are like terms. So between these three terms here, which do you propose are like terms? Well, it's, in fact, these two that don't have a square root are not multiplying by a square root. So we can actually add 5 plus 5 here and get 10. But just like you can't add 10 plus 5x, you can't actually combine these two. This is its simplest form. So the perimeter for a is 10 plus 5 times the square root of 2. And again, we could write it as a decimal squared of 2, plug it in the calculator, get a decimal. But we like in math to have exact values as much as possible. And there's no rounding involved when we leave it as 10 plus 5 times the square root of 2. Now, 11b may be something we've forgotten in a while. How to find the area of a triangle. So just to reiterate here, the area of a rectangle is length times width. Well, why mention that? Well, the area of a triangle is half of a rectangle. So that's really what we're looking at here is half and more so not even half of a rectangle, but half of a square because we're dealing with an isosceles right triangle. So with that in mind, if we know that a square we have a square, we're essentially taking, taking the length of one of our sides and multiplying it by the length of our other side. Well, if an isosceles right triangle is half of a square, then we are, the area formula for a triangle is one half those two sides multiplied, which we often refer to them as base and height. Now, why do we use base and height? It's because it's the two measurements that 
base creates the bottom and height is our vertical measurement. So we typically use B and H to represent the base and height um, for our measurements in area. So we know that the length of our base and our height in this context is both five. So we're going to take one half of five times five. Now multiplication is commutative. So you could take half of five first and then multiply that times five. Or I find it a little bit easier to multiply five times five first and get 25. Then take half of 25, which is... 12.5. So just a reiteration of how to find the area of a triangle. Learning how to add when we have square roots. Now let's look at item 12. 12 says find the perimeter of a square as a simplified radical, no decimals here, if the length of its diagonal is 14 inches. So let's sketch that out. So we're dealing with a square, so all sides are congruent and all angles are right angles. And then they tell us that we have a diagonal and it doesn't matter which one because the two diagonals of a square are actually congruent, that we have a diagonal that's 14 inches in length and we are tasked to find the perimeter, which is the total distance around our square. So in order to do that, we definitely need to find one of the distances of one of our sides and then know that all four sides are the same length. So this is where our um, ratio, our relationship really comes in handy, where H, the hypotenuse, which is our diagonal, 14 in this case, is equal to the leg times the square root of 2. So we're going to replace H in this relationship with 14, and we're solving for one of the lengths of our legs. So we'll divide both sides by the square root of 2. We saw this math again on the previous page, so let's kind of reiterate how to do this and the trouble behind it, if you will. Earlier, the square root of two divided on both sides and actually canceled itself out. The problem here is in the numerator, we don't have the square root of two. In fact, we don't have a square root in the numerator. So we actually have to do something called rationalizing the denominator, where we can't leave the square root in the denominator. So we have to get rid of it. That's really how we're rationalizing the denominator. So to do that, we will multiply square root of 2 times itself, a.k.a. squaring it. How do you undo a square root? You square it. And watch what happens here. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which is 2. So multiplying the square root of 2 times itself gets rid of that square root. Now, again, whatever we do to the bottom of a fraction, we have to do to the top. So we're also going to multiply the numerator times square root of 2 as well. Now, we're seeing the connection here between variables and radicals. So we can multiply square root of 2 times square root of 2, but we can't actually physically multiply 14 times the square root of 2 without getting a decimal. So we just push those together. Well, there's another way we could write this so we could simplify it. 14 times the square root of 2 over 2 can also be written as 14 over 2 times the square root of 2. And when we view it this way, we can see that 14 over 2 can actually be simplified to 7 times the square root of 2. So there is the length of one of our sides, 7 times the square root of 2. And because it's a square, every side is 7 times the square root of 2, in this case, inches. So they want us to find the perimeter. So you could either add this up four times or use multiplication. So the perimeter is four times the length of each of our sides because all four sides are the same length. So we're actually going to multiply our like parts of these two terms. So we're going to multiply the four, which is not under square root, times the seven, also not under square root, and get 28 times the square root of two. In this case, we're measuring in inches. So putting in a little context here, in the square, which is again made up of two isosceles right triangles. So that is the lesson 21 one practice. Hopefully it helped. Thank you for watching.